Welcome back to Fly Fishing Podcast. I'm going to show you how to tie one of my floating mayflies. Um, it's a nymph. It's a um, mayfly in terms of more than American way of talking about mayfly nymphs. So it's an upwing uh, fly. I'm taking uh, just black silk onto this. Um, it's a Vanyard's hook which I've been using which um, there we go, show, that, show you those. Just a size 16 Osprey uh, dry fly light hook, um, light nymph. Which, I tell you what, they're, they're good hookers and I quite like them, quite to use them for dry flies. A, a light hook, I don't see there's anything wrong with that. But I have, um, maybe it's just this batch, but I'm finding they bend quite a bit. I've lost a couple of large fish on them. When I say large, I mean uh, five, six pounds plus, uh, particularly on the on the river test. I'm going to take a little bit of grizzle hackle. Uh, this is cock hackle, and just tank it down to the bend of the hook. Um, spray that out. That's just. Uh, ripped off the end of a cock hackle like that so um, then I'm going to take polypropylene dubbing this is the grey one it's a turrell which I've used to tie my little grey thing um, Tim's a little grey and I'm going to lightly just dub this onto my thread I don't want too much at the end I want to taper the body and tie that, tie it in nice and tight. I'm going to build about there. That's about two thirds of the way along. Then I'm going to build up a lump of dubbing. What I'm going to do that is I'm going to dub it on fairly tight. Then I'm going to push it back, twist again, twist again, and get that lump going. That lump, I'm going to put on top of the hook, I'm going to bring it up to the top like that, hold it so it's on top, a couple of turns in front, maybe even a couple of turns underneath uh, the base of it. So I've now I've got a lump of dubbing on top of the hook there. That lump of dubbing will help this fly sit in the top of the water and float. I'm just going to put a bit more dubbing on to finish the fly off. And that basically is it. Now this isn't one of my f flies besides the killers. This is the killers I'm fishing and the hooks and the size. Um, the idea has been around for some time. I've seen it in, in fly tying the Richard Swisher flies. Um, it's one of those uh, uh, Swisher and Carl Richards books, and it's really good um, set of flies they've come up with, the paradons, etc., um, which I also will demonstrate. Are fantastic little flies. But the technique has been around for ages. People have been thinking about this particular little fly for some time. And basically, you grease up the top and you can grease the whole fly. And it will flush, flush with a film of the water. Um, you can just grease the top of it and that will fish flush as well. If you're fishing on something like fluoro, eventually the fluoro will drop through. And if you just twitch that under, sometimes when you just give it that a little twitch, that can be the spark for the, the fish to take. But generally, I would de dread do this things so like uh, dead drifting. I would fish it like I would fish it dry, um, and it, it is that sort of profile. The meniscus, the in the interface between air and water, is a very very important bit of. Uh, the trout's world. You've got to understand that they will see fit 
flies on top of it, flies in it, and flies just underneath it as totally different concepts. Even if it's the same fly you're fishing, you can present it in three different ways. And it's always, always worth thinking about how you're going to present that fly, whereabouts it is in the water. You know, fantastic little thing. You can tie it in different colours, um, such as the green, olives, uh, even tups pink, uh, even reds are very effective. But this particular grey one is what is taking on the river at the moment. So um, try it, give it a go, gain your confidence. Uh, another tip is look at the end of your line, maybe fish uh, another fly which is very visible in front of it so you know where your fly is and um, strike at the rise, you know, just wait, pause, strike and um, you shouldn't be missing too many fish. Anyway, come and see me at the Fly Fishing Podcast website www.flyfishingpodcast my Instagram site, uh, Fly Fishing Podcast once more, or, you know, where you see me on YouTube, Fly Fishing Podcast, yet again. Anyway, tight lines.